guys and welcome back to Changing Landforms. Um, we are working on chapter two, lesson three, um, and today we're going to be focusing on reading and talking about a book called What's Stronger. Okay, so um, last lesson we watched a, a model basically about how water can affect a landform and in our model we used flour and we also used a spray bottle that had water in it. So what did we observe when we added water to our object last time? So when we added water to our flour, we noticed that initially the flour was really light and it was fluffy um, and powdery. And then once we sprayed the water onto it, it created more of a solid. So we did see that at the beginning, it changed from being like more of a powder to at the end, the water changed it to be more of a solid. Um, and the evidence that the model gave us is that water can also affect landforms as well. Maybe not in the exact same way that it affected our flower model, but water still can make a change. So today we're going to investigate the question, how could water change a landform even though landforms are made of hard rock? So today we're going to be reading this book called What is Stronger? It contains information about real landforms to help us investigate how water can change a landform. So remember that it's super important when we're reading to be visualizing. Um, so to visualize means to make a picture in your mind using information from different sources. We can use the pictures we create in our minds as we read to help make sense of how water changes landforms. Let's preview the photos in the book and visualize water changing each landform. So we're gonna do that with one right here. So this is from page six in our book, What's Stronger? So the heading tells me that the landform is a hill and I can use the photo to visualize a hill and imagine how water might change it. So when I'm looking at the picture, I'm noticing that obviously our landform is this hill. Um, I also see that there's water running through it. So I'm thinking about over time as the water continues to run down this hill, maybe the opening where the water is will get wider eventually. I'm also noticing that it was probably like a more solid dirt at one time. And it seems like that dirt is kind of becoming more watery and maybe even flowing down the hill as well. Um, and I'm thinking that maybe over time, more of that grass and straw will also eventually start to flow down the hill as well. Um, and again, so that's how I'm visualizing it, but maybe somebody else who's looking at this picture might see it a different way. So we're going to be going ahead and reading the book. And while we're reading the book, you guys should pause as frequently as you can to visualize using or use the pictures to visualize how water is actually changing these different landforms. So we're going to go ahead and stop this video for now. And then you guys can go and listen to the YouTube reading of the What's Stronger book, and then we will come back and discuss what we read. What's Stronger? How Water Causes Erosion by Lincoln Bergman and Jacqueline Barber. Water is powerful. Water may not seem powerful. It flows around things. You can jump into it and swim through it. Still, water is powerful. It can make things change. This is a book about the power of water. We often see water fall as rain. Even in a big storm, each raindrop is small. Is rain powerful? Can little raindrops make anything change? What's stronger, raindrops or a hill? When rain falls, raindrops hit the ground. The raindrops break off little pieces of rock and soil. Raindrops collect into streams of water. The water flows downhill. It carries the pieces of rock and soil with it. Many raindrops together can break off and carry away many pieces of soil and rock. Losing pieces of soil and rock makes a hill smaller. This is called erosion. While rain may not seem powerful, it is. Rain causes hills and other landforms to change. What's stronger, a stream or a boulder? Really big rocks are called boulders. The boulder in this picture is huge. It looks very stable. Could a stream move this boulder? Believe it or not, the answer is yes. 
In a flood, more water flows through a stream than usual. The water moves very fast. Flood water can be powerful enough to move big boulders. Even when there is not a flood, water changes boulders. Streams make boulders smaller. Flowing water breaks small pieces of rock off boulders. The water erodes the boulders. Over time, boulders become smaller and more rounded. What's stronger, a river or a mountain? Mountains look very stable. Still, over time, water can change them. Water flows down a mountain in a stream and rivers. As it flows, the water breaks off pieces of rock from the mountain. Water carries the pieces down the mountain. Over a very long time, water breaks many pieces of rock off the mountain. The mountain becomes smaller and more rounded. Rivers and streams erode the mountain. Rivers carry rock pieces down to the ocean. The rock pieces become sand. What's stronger, waves or a beach? Many, many tiny pieces of sand together make up a beach. We find beaches where the land meets the water. Waves of water hit a beach over and over again. Each time a wave hits the beach, it can carry away pieces of sand. Waves can erode beaches. They can carry sand from one place to another. What's stronger, ice or rock? These rock pieces used to be one whole boulder. Now the boulder is broken into pieces. What happened? The rock was eroded by ice. Ice is frozen water. When water gets cold, it freezes into solid ice. This boulder had small cracks in it. Liquid water seeped down into the cracks. When it got cold, the water froze into solid ice. The ice pushed the sides of the cracks apart. It made the cracks wider. Pieces of the rock broke off. Ice broke the rock into much smaller pieces. Water can cause erosion even when it is solid ice. What's stronger, a glacier or a valley? Did you know that glaciers are made of frozen water? Glaciers are like huge rivers of ice. They move very, very slowly. Glaciers move so slowly that you can't see them move. Still, glaciers are very powerful. As glaciers move, they break off pieces of rock. The glaciers can move the rock pieces to other places. By breaking off pieces of rock, a glacier can make a valley wider. Glaciers make narrow valleys into wide valleys shaped like the letter U. Water erodes the land. Now what do you think is stronger? Raindrops or a hill? A river or a mountain? Ice or rock? Water is powerful. It causes rock to break apart. It moves rock from place to place. It can even form rivers of solid ice. It erodes hills and even mountains. Water causes erosion. It causes landforms to change. Glossary. Erode. To wear down rock, soil, or sand. Erosion. When rock, soil, or sand is worn down and moved from one place to another. Landform. A feature of Earth's surface such as a mountain, a cliff, or a valley. Stable, staying mostly the same. All right, guys, so we just listened to the story of What's Stronger, where it gave us some real-world examples of how water can affect landforms. So remember that the question that we're investigating is how could water change a landform even though the landforms are made of hard rock? So we're going to be thinking a lot about the examples in our book. So what new information did the book provide about how water can change a landform? So you guys can go ahead and pause this video and you can either answer the question by writing it in your packet, you can talk to somebody at home, or you can just think about the answer in your head. Okay, so our first question is, what is the example of water in this picture and what is the example of the landform? 
And I also want you guys to be thinking about what does the water do to the landform? So I'm gonna have you guys pause the video again and jot down your answer um, in your packet. If, again, if you don't have a packet, you can talk to somebody at home or just think about the answer in your head. So in this example, the water would be the river that's flowing through. And then the example of the landform would be the mountain. When we're thinking about what the water does to the landform, the river is changing the shape of the mountain over time. And again, this is probably a pretty slow process, but as the water is flowing through the mountain, it's making it become smaller and more rounded. So that's how it is changing. Okay, so here's a different picture from our book. So again, we're going to be thinking about what is the water in this example and how is it different from the other water in our other examples in the book. So again, you can pause the video and write your answer down in the packet talk to somebody at home or think about it in your head. Okay, so our example of water in this picture is our glacier. So what's different about the water here is that this is actually an example of a solid form of water because the glacier is actually made of ice. So typically in our book, we've seen other examples where the water is in liquid form, whether that's a river or a stream or a beach. So that is a difference in the way the water is shown. Okay, so again, in this picture, what is the example of the landform? And what does the water do to the landform? So the landform in this picture is the valley. Um, and over time, glaciers will, as the glaciers move very slowly, as the book said. So even though you can't see a glacier moving, like you'd see a river moving, it is moving over time. And as it moves, it's pulling solid rock down with it. So over time, the glacier will make the valley wider or make it into a bigger U-shape. The examples we just discussed provide evidence to support the idea that both liquid water and solid water can change the shape of landforms. The water in rivers, streams, glaciers, and the ocean is powerful enough to change a landform. All right, so that is the end of lesson three for you guys. We did all three activities and you guys will tune back in for lesson number four.